Hi, Robin with OxyDry. And today I'm uh, cleaning a uh, an apartment that I actually have cleaned. Uh, I guess I've been here two or three times in the last couple of two or three years. Um, the lady just uh, actually the uh, management company of this uh, these apartments uh, is the largest management company in Kelowna, and they actually do require the tenants to clean their carpets every year, which is um, actually a really good idea. Um, but anyway, uh, so she is one of my customers who does this on a regular basis. And uh, today I, um, usually I do her furniture as well. Last year she omitted the furniture. I just did the carpet. But um, this year I just I just finished the uh, couch and the chaise chair lounge. <laughs> and uh, I did this mattress here. And now, and I pre-vacuumed the carpet and... I think we're about 11 o'clock now. I got here around 9 or just after. And so I'm now I'm ready to, do, to clean the carpet. And I thought it might be helpful for some of you to see kind of how I do things and why I do things the way I do to sort of um, uh, give you some insight into um, what I'm up to. Uh, so this carpet actually overall is in very good shape. It is an olefin. It's a commercial grade kind of a carpet. Um, and the only area where I'm seeing any visible soiling is basically from about here and out to the door. So, um, and everywhere else, there's no visible soiling, actually. So I would, my typical approach would be any areas like, you know, over here and whatnot. If there isn't any visible soiling, then I, I typically I'm going to go straight to using a um, the Iron Man. I think I see a little spot right there. Um, I actually only saw like two or three spots on the whole carpet, so it's overall in really good shape. But again, she's um, she's taking care of it, and I've been here regularly cleaning it for her. Um, so normally, if there's no visible soiling, then I would go straight to the Iron Man. But if there's actual visible soiling, like a traffic lane like this, then I've learned uh, that it's um, more efficient, usually faster, and uh, gives me the best results to go over at least these traffic areas with um, a fiber pad, either a, a hog's hair, which is a, what I normally use, uh, or a white fiber pad, which works fine as well, but uh, I find the hog's hair just sort of kicks it up a notch. So um, now I also am going to give it a little pre-treat, and this is this is my pre-treat. Hang on a sec. There we go. And um, not that much. This is actually the All Rug product that I often use, uh, made by Aller Search. It's actually a cleaner in its own right, as a carpet cleaner, but I mix it up strong and use it as my pre-spray normally because it seems to work really well and it's inexpensive readily available. I get it from Amazon. It goes a long way. Uh, anyway, so I'm just going to give this area a pre-treat. Now, one of the other things is that when I'm sort of coming in and looking at the job, I sort of do an assessment as to, um, and I, I guess I don't really necessarily think of this, because I've been doing it for so long, it sort of just comes naturally to me, I guess. But, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this area first with the fiber pad and then, you know, finish that off. Then I'll switch to the Iron Man. I'll clean everything else. But typically what I do is I will go over the area that's the most soiled first, go do my the rest of the area, and then I come back out of the place over the area where I, uh, w that was most soiled so that um, it actually ends up getting an, an extra cleaning. Um, anyway, makes sense, right? <laughs> A little bit of extra, auto, almost automatic, um, going over the really soiled areas. So, now you'll notice how I engage the brush, or the drive block in this case. I'm not using a brush, of course. But I'm going to do it by uh, dropping onto the, onto, the, onto the drive block. And give it a bit of a wiggle. I can tell it's pretty much in there. Drop the handle. I'm going to bump start it, which means I'm not going to go full bore. I'm just going to give it a little tap. I can feel that it's hooked in. I'm ready to go. Nice and easy. Um, OK, 
Okay, so I just sprayed right there, so I'm gonna immediately go over there with the fabric pad. And I'm feeding down right now. This fiber pad has got a little bit of a wobble in it, which is annoying. <laughs> I guess it got compressed on one side. And I actually am going to go into that room over to my right with the fiber pad as well. That's where she spends most of her time, kind of like an office. So I'm just feathering down, on, on. Just, uh, you get sort of instinctual on how much to apply when you uh, shower feet. It takes a little bit of practice to, to get the hang of it. <clears throat> of course, this entryway, where we come in from the hallway out there is gets the worst of the wear and tear. But this is a pretty clean building actually. Um, this company does keep their properties up well. Some places don't obviously and you can tell when you get in the hallways and they just they look awful. But this place uh, is actually it's a nice place actually. Okay, so I'm just going to go in to this room. And notice that where I parked my outlet right there, my my point of, and I work away from the power as much as I can rather than running backwards into my power source. Um, that just is too clumsy. <laughs> so this place, this area doesn't look that bad, but I know she spends more time in here, so I'm just going to give it a quick pre-scrub with the fiber pad. Which of course then does give me uh, the dwell time. But in areas where you don't have any obvious soiling, dwell time is certainly not critical at all. I guess this lady's a lawyer. Or a teacher. Well, she's got a law degree. Teacher's degree. Uh, lawyer. Okay. So I've done the the areas that are of concern there's actually a weird looking distortion there I think hmm. looks a bit funny right there I don't think it's a stain though the carpet's kind of a mottled hiding stains easily kind of a carpet okay so I'm done with the fiber pad so I'm going to There, I guess. So we'll ditch the fiber pad. I'm switching over to the Iron Man. Now that's a symbol bag, by the way, because you're wondering. That's where I carry my pads and my uh, my uh, drive block in. I just have a, it's got a strap goes over the handle of my machine. Very easy to do that. <clears throat> so when I vacuumed, what I did is I vacuumed in the center and then I pulled 
everything I needed out from the walls. And what I'll do now is I'm going to go in behind where the furniture goes with the Iron Man, and then I'll be able to put things right back onto the carpet right away, and uh, that'll be done. And then I can do the center area. Even in front of the couch here, there's no obvious soiling, really, so it's actually, uh, she's really um, maintaining the carpet well, and of course I've been cleaning it, I, th I guess I've cleaned it maybe three or four times, and it's uh, staying clean. Just the entrance there where you're seeing any soil happening. Okay, now we're going to Park that there. Put this back over here. And uh, the lamp. Oops, hook the wire here. And we'll move the couch back. This is the couch I did. It's dry. Oh, see, there's a slight amount of moisture on the front, on the arm there, but it's pretty much dry. Sort of a velvety fabric, eh? so uh, it does benefit from a little bit of grooming. Um, it's not, it's a synthetic, so it grooms easily. Okay, now I'm just going to do this section right here, which is where that other couch goes. do this section I can move the table over and then uh, do where it's sitting And uh, I am cleaning with Nanomax, which is a 97% uh, food grade plant-based ingredients with a health rating of zero. I, I always am um, wanting to be sure that I use very safe products that are safe both for myself, as I'm exposed to them every day, <clears throat> and of course my customers who um, quite often ask, what am I cleaning with? And is it safe? Uh, so it's very important that we uh, do uh, have safe cleaning products. 
And somebody reminded me of something the other day regarding that particular subject that we're actually supposed to have in our vehicles an SDS sheet for uh, everything that we're carrying in case we're involved in an accident. And, uh, you know, there's uh, chemicals being spilt all over the place and there's the firemen and whatever and emergency workers and they want to know, what have, we, what have we got in there? I mean, think about that. If you have products that, uh, you know, the bottles burst all over the place and um, you've got uh, things that can mix together and suddenly make something toxic, oh boy. That could be a problem. And uh, I do have a book in my van. It's supposed to have a yellow, if I remember correctly, it's supposed to be a yellow a yellow binder. Um, and um, I, I do have one in my van, but I actually really need to update it because I have changed some of my products from when I put that in there uh, a couple of years ago, I guess now. So I need to update that. Um, so that's one thing to bear in mind when you're, um, whatever you're carrying. <laughs> okay, we'll park that over there, and then I can do that. Overall, the carpet actually really looks fine. It's just the the entryway <coughs> that um, is or was showing, you know, a dark path. Now it's looking looking a lot better. I, although I haven't go, haven't gone over with the Iron Man yet, but by pre-scrubbing that already, it's been sitting for the last 15 minutes or so, and. Uh, so it gets plenty of dwell time, even though I'm shower feeding. And if I did use the Iron Man, I would still have started there and gone and done everything else and then finished by going out there so that this area would always end up getting an extra clean anyway and have that extra dwell time. So that's uh, why I do things the way I do. Okay, so I'm going to go into this room with the Iron Man. And before I come around the corner, I need to pull slack behind me so I don't drag it around the corner, which can scratch up the uh, molding. Don't want to do that. Trim, whatever. <laughs> okay. I uh, did a little modification to the LED light that I had put on the machine uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and if you've watched a couple, when I, I think it was in the clubhouse where I showed it the first time. What I was finding is that it um, it was uh, really actually putting out such a strong glaring light because it had a clear lens on it and um, like a uh, like a clear bulb. And it just gave such sh defined, uh, sharp shadows and almost overwhelmed the carpet, kind of shining back up at me and was giving some, some weird color effects as well. So what I did is I, uh, if I can show this, I'll do it this way. What I did is I went to a plastic shop. I don't know if you can see that, but... Uh, and I got a some translucent plastic, and I uh, cut it to shape, 
and glued it around the light here and that has uh, given me a, a more diffused light and it, and it works better. It still puts out the same lumens, it just um, doesn't have that glare back in my eyes. And now it's just, just right. And of course that means with the light I can really see where I'm going. That's a bit tricky there. But with the handle release right here, makes it easy, short work of that. Okay, now I'm gonna go over this way. And, oh, I know, I need to get behind that door. Edges are done with the mostly done with the vacuum and when we're needed I can do them with a hand brush or a hand tool. Always look behind the door for little surprises. <laughs> okay, now so what I'm going to do now is this is me kind of working my way out plus I do have a little room to do just over to the right there, just a small area in the room which is where the mattress is that I did. So, uh, I'll work my way out towards the uh, exit here, and this area, as I already mentioned, is now getting an extra going over, because I did go over it with the fiber pad first. It's been dwelling for 20 minutes, and I'm getting the maximum performance this way. I've got all my, I've got my upholstery cleaning, uh, the Von Schroeder dry foam machine sitting here as well as the, the carpet stuff because she actually took off. And um, so I had to bring everything up. Normally I'd, I'd do the, the furniture cleaning and then take the all that back down to the van and come back up with the carpet cleaning setup. Um, but I had to bring it all up, you know, all at once. So because she's gone and there, she didn't have an extra key for me. So I do see a couple of little sprouts here. Okay. Take those off of there. And uh, that's all we need to do there. And of course I did pre-vacuum everything. I think I, I guess I mentioned that already. I use the workhorse it's sitting over there just to the left. Just take it easy right here. No hurry. I've only been at it for what 25 minutes almost. It was really fast. I won't be pre uh, post vacuuming or post grooming this carpet, um, but I do see. A little something right underneath the hinge. It's gone. Just a 
a little bit of something on the cloth, but it was visible. Okay, I'm just gonna go into here. Saw some dust there. I carry a little brush right there for things too. It's right where I need it. No, I actually did over on the other side of the bed with the uh, upholstery machine when I did the mattress. It was just too tight to get in there otherwise. It's a bit of a tight corner, but no problem. I did right up to the end there with the poster machine. Okay, now I'm gonna have to... Hmm. I did behind the door with my poster machine as well. I anticipated this, <laughs> so we're good. So basically, I'm, I'm done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to park on a dry pad when I get myself ready to roll. I'm going to uh, pull this back a little bit. And um, I have a, I don't know if you can see, but I have a shutoff valve right down there. And I do that just in case. It, it has happened where the vet valve in the tank maybe got a carpet fiber or whatever stuck in there and usually you don't realize that and, the, and it jams open slightly and you walk away from your machine come back a little while later and there's a pool of water underneath the machine that's really not a good thing to happen especially if you're on a hardwood floor <laughs> maybe i'll tell that story one day it wasn't my it wasn't this machine it was another one <laughs> but anyway um so i do have a valve there to as a, a uh, just as a precaution. So I'm just gonna take off the dry block. So that's pretty soiled, not terribly soiled, but uh, yeah, the carpet, especially right here, definitely looks better. It's, it's damper than the rest, of course. So that makes it a little bit darker, but as it dries over the next hour or so, um, actually I'll feel it. Uh, it's a little bit wet, but uh, it'll brighten up really nicely. And uh, she's been, as I say, she's been getting uh, me to clean a carpet every year now for, I think, th three or four years now. And uh, she's been very happy with how it turns out and how it stays clean and how fast it dries. And uh, so she's a regular customer, and I really do appreciate that. And uh, just glad to be here doing it again for her. So anyway, hope that will help uh, some of you guys who are kind of new into doing this type of cleaning and how to uh, sort of plan things out and uh, how to go about doing things, make it um, as simple as possible. That's always my goal. And notice that, by the way, because I have the tank, um, when I come up with a carpet, stuff by the way what I bring is obviously this this spotter tray which has a strap goes over my shoulder so I can carry it and the vacuum and this symbol bag with two or three pads and a fiber pad and a dry block in it and that's all I bring up there's no pump up sprayer or uh, whatever because everything I need mo uh, solution is actually right in there and in this water bottle so just to keep it simple. Okay, well, I'm gonna go and get out of here because it's actually seems really warm in this place. Although it's cold outside today. <laughs> so I'll freeze when I get outside. Anyway, have a good day.